According to the World Health Organization, depressive disorder or depression is a common mental health condition characterized by a low mood or loss of pleasure or interest in activities for long periods of time. Dr. Morakinyo Gabriel, a clinical psychologist at the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital Yaba, Lagos, says about 4 out of 10 Nigerian women are depressed. Speaking in an interview with the news agency of Nigeria in Lagos, he said depression was one of the many conditions associated with mental illness. He explained that changes in an individual with depression ranged from mild, moderate to severe, with subtle symptoms that become more recognizable if not addressed. The most uh, recurring diagnosis that we have been substance abuse cases as well as uh, some uh, mood disorders. These are the major cases that are uh, presently that we are dealing with in, uh, in this country. Uh, to the extent that maybe out of every uh, 10 women, about four, we have one form of depression or the other. And of course, about maybe uh, two and a half of them, that's about 25% of them, will eventually break down and require treatment. You know, and uh, uh, we have that as uh, one of the common ones. Of course, depression we are talking about has, has different levels from mild to moderate to severe. For a lot, a lot of people uh, live with uh, a depression, not realizing that it's actually depression. You might find out, for example, they are not as interested as they used to be with things. Maybe they are not attending, uh, they're not, uh, the things that used to interest them before, yeah, yeah, it's diminishing, their interest is reducing. From mild depression, if it's not well uh, taken care of, it cannot begin to now, uh, to now begin, uh, we begin to see bigger signs. When those differences now begin to get marked, you definitely see that this person is, ah, why is this person looking like this? It's not so dressed. You may not notice that under mild uh, depression. The person may still be pass, you know, passable. But by moderate, you begin to, others are beginning to uh, notice some difference. Uh, the, the, the person looking maybe uh, not as well kept as you used to. Uh, the dress is not looking that much. You can maybe the mood uh, is, has dropped. The person is not as spontaneous as he or she used to be and stuff like that. That you could be getting. And then of course, there's quite a lot of thoughts, a lot of hundreds of thoughts that are coming in at some, at the same time that the person is having difficulty handling. When we, and then sleep issues, maybe uh, uh, attention issues and focus issues. Uh, uh, appetite issues, that person is gaining weight or losing weight, you know, begin to become obvious, that's at moderate. So if you don't take care of when you have the mild uh, symptom, you, you know, you begin to get marked. If that is also not taken, you don't begin to get severe. When at that time, everybody knows that definitely there's something with this person. He urged people to begin to question their mental well-being based on the subtle changes they identify in themselves. A lot of people, they will begin to observe the changes within themselves, in as much that they may not understand these changes. But by the time uh, an individual begins to understand that things that used to be easier or, you know, or easily done before, uh, or situations that we, uh, we are easily, uh, that person was able to easily maneuver before, it's not become a little bit uh, complex and difficult. You might begin to ask some few questions. What's causing this? Uh, or maybe a, a relationship that used to be very easy and smooth but it's not getting a little bit, uh, you know, uh, difficult. It might begin to add. Or some feelings. This person now begins to find some strange feelings. It's getting maybe quick to respond, easy to anger, you know, and something that, that wasn't there before. That person should begin to now ask questions. What could be a, a response? For example, in terms of uh, emotions now, which is an aspect of uh, of our own personal being, and which could also be affected by mental health issues, we now find ourselves, you know, getting easily angered by maybe children's behavior, what some people call being on edge. Anytime there's noise, you will go keep quiet there, you know, there's a reaction there. And, it, and then there could be what you call a displaced anger as a result of probably what happened at work or what happened at the relationship. One cannot come on and not begin to not displace the anger on people at home. These are mental health issues. So there are things to look out for. Sleep issues, for example. We look for, at, for issues across all of those areas I mentioned earlier. 
We look at uh, uh, issues in the physical, including sleep, including appetite, including uh, weight. Are you losing or uh, adding weight recently? Are you, is anything happening to you? Are you falling sick more than before? We ask questions in diarrhea. We ask questions in the relationship, in terms of uh, relationship both with, within the immediate family, with neighbors, with colleagues at, uh, at work. How's the relationship like? You know, we ask for things with, uh, 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 with work. We ask the issues with finance and all of, including spiritual as well as psychological functioning. From, it's from there that we'll not be able to gather information and arrive at a diagnosis, if there's any. And then, of course, now we begin to plan the uh, uh, treatment. Choma Fakuridi, a mental health advocate living with bipolar disorder, speaks on the importance of seeking professional help. In 2018, I was diagnosed with clinical depression and anxiety. However, later in 2019, I realized that it was a misdiagnosis through the frequent visits to the doctor's suicidal thoughts and so many reoccurring issues. I was later diagnosed with bipolar disorder, with depression being one of the major symptoms of bipolar disorder. And um, through this time, I having to run my NGO and help people in similar um, situation, it hasn't been easy for me. Um, you know, sometimes the constant thoughts of suicide, um, the being low on energy, and even sometimes the manic energy that comes with bipolar disorder as well, and the rage and everything in between. But one of the things that has helped me so far, number one, is knowing my triggers, knowing the things that, you know, would affect me and actually avoiding them. My constant visit to my doctors, my specialists, my psychiatrists, my psychologists, I don't play with them at all because I think they've been the major help, you know, through this experience. And then lastly, the support system I have, my family, my husband, and everybody. I think one of the things that has also helped me is being able to tell my story to the world. I talk about my, um, you know, my experience and my condition all the time. And having to see people who can come to me and say, this is something I'm experiencing, and, you know, giving back in the way that I give back has helped me through this journey. For the people around me, I know it's not easy, you know, having to see your loved ones suffer or having to see them go through the things that I'm going through. But one of the things um, that has helped them is being aware and educated about disorder. And this has allowed them to follow me all through this journey. Access to mental health support in Nigeria is very limited. We have very few federal and state psychiatric hospitals that exist. However, I must commend the NGOs doing work in this space. I would just like to let you know that these conditions are very normal. They exist, but I want you to get the help that you need. Remember that your mental health is as important as your physical health. Thank you.